thank you so very much for having me here today. That is, is, is really nice. Um, let's go ahead and uh, get started here today. Um, I think you're, by law, you always have to have a comic or a, a little cartoon with any presentation. You just you have to do that. Uh, so uh, here's, the, here's the one that, that I'll be sharing today. Um, it's got this uh, guy there saying, um, I'm about to be late for work. Have you seen my keys? And uh, his wife says, yeah, they're on the nightstand. And he replies, thanks, baby. You're the new Google. Uh, now, I, I picked this one for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is that... Uh, I kind of look like the guy, little by little, uh, the hair is disappearing. Um, but also, I do this all the time. I mean, seriously, I forget things all the time. Uh, my, my wife saves me a lot with that because I, I do. I have a hard time keeping track. I've got so much stuff going on. I'm a creative kind of person. I'm always thinking about stuff, but I can't find my keys. Um, but uh, so I, I, I do identify with that. But I also chose it because of the, the phrase, the new Google. And that's what I'm hoping that we'll be seeing today. When people think of Google, a lot of times you just think of search, which makes perfect sense. I mean, you know, that's what they're known for. They're a search engine. But oh my gosh, they are so much more than that. And so hopefully that's what we'll be seeing today is the new Google. You're gonna we'll be talking about Gmail and Google Calendar and Google Docs and Google Forms and all of the amazing things you can do with Google Apps. It really is very, very different than what some people might be aware of. And hopefully we'll be seeing that today. Um, the type of stuff that we will be talking about. Uh, now this is more of just the, the morning agenda. We'll do some different things uh, after lunch. And definitely, I'm seriously more than happy to adjust this however it works best for you guys so please 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 ask questions give suggestions if you you know want to catch me in between sessions or at lunch and say well what about this more than happy to adjust this so that it meets your needs as best as possible but my idea for the morning is to start off with what is google apps why use google apps why would you take all the time and energy to convert to this and use this what's what's the benefits of it I want to talk a little bit about reliability and security because people always, somebody always has that question in the back of their mind and that kind of also taps into Google Apps challenges because I don't want to make it just sound like this is just the most wonderful thing in the world. It is great, but I want to be realistic too and let you know these are the things you've got to address. You've got to think about some things as you make these changes. And then I want to spend some time going into details on the, some of the core apps. I want to make sure you understand what they are, but I want to share what we've been doing with them. You know, creative ways we've been using Google presentations and spreadsheets and forms and calendar and sites and ah, some ways of how to use it in your classroom, other ways how to use it for your own personal productivity, other ways for how your school can use it. Lots of different ideas there. And so that's sort of the idea for the morning. Now, we're going to do basically two one-hour sessions. It's all one big session, uh, but probably my guess is we'll probably get through the challenges here in this first hour, then we'll take a break for 15 minutes and then do the second half of this. But that's sort of sort of the idea for our morning session there. Um, and I do understand we got a little bit of a mixed crowd here as far as some folks have been using Google Apps and some are still waiting to get their accounts because it's you know getting rolled out a little bit differently in the different districts. Just by a show of hands, who has at some point logged into your Google Apps account? Got a few people here and there. Okay, very good. So sounds like more new than not, and that's fine. That's perfectly fine. Okay, even those who have logged in and have used it, hopefully, some of the introductory stuff I have here won't be you know too much of the same stuff. It'll hopefully give you a good overview as well. All right, any questions before we launch into this? Questions, comments, anything? Let me know at any point. All right, thanks guys. All right, here we go. So first of all, what is Google Apps? Um, well, Google Apps is a suite of applications, okay? It's a lot of things. Google Apps isn't just Google Docs. Okay. Google Apps is lots of programs. Um, you'll see in a moment, dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of programs. Um, so it's a suite of very powerful applications okay, and services, uh, and they're all web-based. That's a, that's a really critical thing. That's really important to understand. Nothing gets installed 
with Google Apps. No one's going to give you a CD and say, take this home and put this in your computer. Uh, you don't have to worry about, well, it doesn't run on a Mac. Well, no, it runs on everything. Okay? It's web-based. It's all about if you can get to a web browser, you got it. Okay? And we'll talk later about why that's so valuable, why that's so important, that that's a feature of it. But keep that in mind. This is all web-based. It all runs inside of your web browser. This presentation I'm showing you right now, that's not a PowerPoint. That is a Google presentation. And it's, that's a web, you're looking at a web page. This is running in my browser right now. Everything I do is completely inside of Google Docs. All right. Uh, next bullet, it is provided by Google. And it's important to know this is the same stuff they use. When you get Google Apps for Education, you're not getting a light version of the Google tools. You're not getting a, you know, a watered down option. No, this is actually what the people at Google use to run their multi-billion dollar corporation. They use the same Gmail you'll use. They use the same Google Docs you use. Now, sometimes they get you know, beta features a little early on, but the point is it is the same thing, and they trust their entire company to run on this, and they're making it available for us. Uh, which is the next bullet point. It is totally free for schools. And there really isn't a catch there. There's not like, yeah, but. No, it really is totally free for schools to use Google Apps for Education. Now, you may say, why? I don't get that. Why, why would that be free? Well, keep in mind, it's not free for everybody. Uh, Google Apps can be available for businesses as well, and they have to pay for it. If a business wants to use it, a commercial business, they have to pay for it. Okay, so they make plenty of money off of that. But really, Google's main source of revenue is advertising. They're an ad company. That's what they are. Google, yeah, they're a search engine, but basically they're an ad company. They sell advertising, and that's how they make the vast majority of their money. So they're, they're okay. They're, they're doing just fine. Uh, financially, so to offer this to schools isn't isn't harming them. I mean, it's it's not it's not you know a great financial hardship for them to offer this to schools. And I think they've got two reasons that they usually give for well, one reason they give, and I think another reason that exists. And the one reason they give is that they got their start. You know, uh, Google was created by two gentlemen when they're at Stanford University, and they got their start and their support through education, and they want to give back. So this is the way they are giving back to the education community by saying, we're going to make this available for free to schools forever. Well, I think there is certainly a second reason, and that is, if you get little kids using Google products, chances are they're going to use them when they're big people too. <laughs> and so I think they're doing, obviously, they're, they're trying to get people to appreciate their products so that when you do grow up, you will continue to use their Google services, which makes perfect sense. I have no problem with that at all. Um, and the last bullet point about it is that it is all hosted by Google. It's what you call cloud computing. I'm sure you've heard that term thrown around a lot. The idea being that you don't have a Google server down the hall here somewhere. Okay? You're, you know, you're not running some. It's all out there on Google servers. They're taking care of that. In our district, we no longer have an Exchange server. Now, you very well may still be using Exchange, perfectly fine. You may eventually switch over to Gmail, but we got rid of that server. We don't need it anymore. We'll let Google host all of that for us. So all of the programs, all the data, all the heavy lifting is being done by Google servers out there somewhere else, and it's being hosted out there in the cloud for you. Okay? So that's a quick definition of what Google Apps is. Let's go into a little more detail. And again, questions at any point, let me know. Uh, here's the nice thing about it. It can be branded with your school's domain. I know I've been saying Google, 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 Google. Well, it doesn't have to be all Google. You can use your own domain and it can still feel very personal. So when somebody sends me an email, yeah, it's through my Google Apps, but it's not Eric Kurtz in a Gmail address, okay? It's, you know, my email address at northcantonschools.org. You're allowed to brand Google Apps with your own domain so that it still has your personality, has your school district represented, which is very nice. So when our school wants to check, our teachers want to check their mail, 
They go to mail.northcantonschools.org. Their calendar is at cal.northcantonschools.org. Their Google Docs are at docs.northcantonschools.org. You can make this very customizable to your district, which is nice. You don't have to get new email addresses and start all over. You can still use what you've always used. Now, I do still have my own personal Gmail address. Don't get me wrong. I do have erickurtz at gmail.com because I keep my personal separate from my, from my work. So, and I would encourage you to do that. Um, you know, definitely have your own personal Gmail account as well, and then you can, you know, play with that and experiment with that and get into Google Docs that way as well as through school. Um, so what comes with Google Apps? So we're still talking about basically what this is. Well, there is this core group of applications that you're going to get. And we're going to talk about each of these as we go through this today. Uh, you get, of course, Gmail, which is your email client, and that comes with your contacts, your address book. Google Calendar, uh, you get Google Docs, which is composed of several pieces, Google Documents, which is like Microsoft Word, Google Presentations, which is like PowerPoint, Google Spreadsheets, which is like Excel, Google Forms, which really isn't like anything else that I can compare it to. It's really awesome, and we'll talk more about Google Forms, Google Drawings, which is like Paint, I guess. Uh, then you've got Google Groups. Uh, that's sort of like, um, you guys do email distribution lists here where if you want to send something to all the, you know, math teachers or something, you could send it to one email address and it goes out to all of them. Excellent. Google Groups is that same way. And we'll talk about what we've done with that where, yeah, you could have one email address that then goes out to all of the, you know, middle school students or the high school staff or, or whatever. And that's Google Groups. Google Sites is used uh, to design web pages. We'll definitely talk about that. Um, Google Video, we don't use a whole lot. Uh, we use YouTube more often than that, but Google Video allows you to upload uh, videos that are for inside use only. Okay, if you have videos that do not need to be out on the world, for, or out on the internet for the rest of the world to see, but it's just for your school district to view, you do have space in Google Video to upload videos as well. Now, this is what they call the core offerings. Okay, these things are the basic, uh, you know, foundation of what Google Apps is. However, that's just the beginning. Okay, those are the core offerings. You also get tons of other things, and obviously, we're not going to read through all of these, but you get all kinds of other Google products as part of Google Apps. Uh, for example, I see on this screen Blogger. Blogger is a great blogging tool. Now, I mentioned Google Sites for creating web pages. Excellent for web pages, and there's a very good reason to use Sites, but if you just want to blog instead, Blogger is a really nice blogging tool, and that's, that's just part of Google Apps. You just get it. Um, other ones, there are so many to pick from. Uh, Picasso Web Albums. I see that on this screen here. Picasso Web Albums is a wonderful way to collect and organize your pictures on the internet that you can then stick into Google Docs and stick into Google Sites and stick into your Gmail and stick into other things and make those web albums available for folks if parents want to come and look at these you know, albums of the field trip and this and that and so forth. Uh, and many others. Google Voice, uh, on and on and on and on. Then beyond that, beyond what Google offers, you can also install third-party applications. And this is what's so neat about Google, is they encourage people, hey, design something that fits in with our stuff. And so people do. You guys use uh, like Inspiration, Kidspiration, does that ring a bell for anybody? The mind mapping tools? Have, have you at least heard, heard of Inspiration, Kidspiration, those programs? Well, there's a program called Lucid Chart. Okay, Lucid Chart is a company that makes a web-based mind mapping tool. Okay. They're not a Google company. They're their own third-party company. But they've designed it in such a way that it integrates with Google Apps. What I mean is we can go into our app settings and we can turn on LucidChart. And now all of our students, all of our staff can just click a LucidChart button, boom, go right to that site, log right in with their Google account. They don't need a new username or password. And now they can create mind maps and they can do all these really cool things that we used to pay money for to buy inspiration or kidspiration, now totally free through LucidChart and integrated right into Google Apps. And there's many, many more than that. That's just one quick example of a third-party tool that can be plugged right into Google Apps. So, and many of them are free, like LucidChart, like I mentioned. Uh, what else about Google Apps? 
Google Apps for Education also comes with what's called uh, Google Apps uh, Email Security. And this is really nice. I understand you were saying students might be getting Gmail soon. Is that, is that right? Okay. I, that, that's a big step when you start having students using Gmail accounts. And so you might be concerned. Well, what should they be allowed to do? You know, who should they be allowed to send email to? What if they send bad things you know what you know what about that well you'll be glad to know that Google Apps comes with Google Apps message security and it provides you with a lot of really nice tools okay obviously you've got the normal spam and virus protection which is really nice I mean we all expect that so you do not get I mean it my inbox is very very clean <laughs> Google does a fantastic job of grabbing all the spam and throwing it into a spam folder they do a great job with that but Google Apps Email Security also provides you with inbound and outbound uh, filters and content rules. I can say our elementary students um, should not be able to send email to other students. We just want them to be able to send email to the staff. We can turn that on. Or uh, I don't think you know our middle school students should be able to email outside of our domain they should just be able to email other students and staff in the domain we can turn that on or I'm worried that they might send something that's inappropriate I want a bad word filter no problem we have a bad word filter I got to create it that was a very fun afternoon uh, <laughs> I just went out in the hallway with a microphone and um, then went to the teachers lounge and picked up a few more um, no, uh, we have about a eh, hundred and some words in there. We used to have more, but you got, to, you know, you end up getting false positives. Well, I guess you could use that word a different way, you know. So we've got about a hundred words that there is no reason anybody should be putting these in a school email message ever. It just doesn't make sense. And so there's a bad word, word filter. If the students send a message that has one of those in there, it bounces it back to him and says, no, no, you, you can't do that. And if you want, you can have it send a copy off to another email address where like a principal or guidance counselor could check these. You could send it off to a quarantine folder. So lots of great security tools built in there for your email as well. And that's very nice to have. Also, there's plenty of storage with Google Apps. You get 25 gigabytes for email. Now, I don't know how that compares to what you currently have, but that was a lifesaver for us. When we were doing our own exchange server, you know, there's only so much space. You know, you got to back it up and you got to make sure that you're, you know, paying for that or figuring out how to do that. And so we often would get the message, you know, your Outlook or your Exchange mailbox is almost full. Please delete stuff. And so we were bumping up against our limits quite a bit. Uh, you get 25 gigabytes of storage with Gmail. Nobody's even close to that. I mean, not even remotely close. That is a ton of space. And I've got a lot of email, and I'm barely scratching into that. So you get lots of storage space for, the, for email. You have unlimited storage space for Google Docs files. Now, what I mean by that is if you make a word processing document in Google Docs, or you make a presentation like this one in Google Presentations, or you make a spreadsheet in Google Spreadsheets, it counts zero towards your storage space. You can have a thousand Google Docs. You can have 10,000 Google Docs. It does not debit against your storage space at all. So you can have unlimited amount of Google Docs. However, if you say, I want to store non-Google files, I want to take a Word document and I want to put it in my Google Docs and not convert it. I just want to store it there. I just want to have it available there so I can download it or share it to others. Or I want to upload a video or I want to upload an image or something into my Google Docs storage. You have five gigabytes, which again is a lot of storage space. Very, very large amount of storage space. And then Google Sites has 100 gigabytes for your domain. So. Lots and lots of storage space in Google Apps, which is nice. All right. Well, that's going to transition us from what it is to why. Any questions on the what about Google Apps? You feel you have a good overview of that. Okay. Let's talk about the why then. So hopefully you're encouraged by that. Hopefully that sounds interesting. Oh, those, those sound like good things. But... Let's get into the real reason of why you would actually make this sort of conversion. Now, there's probably way more reasons than I'm going to list. I'm going to list about seven, about seven reasons that for me have been really important for our switch to Google Apps. 
The first one is access anywhere and anytime. Now, this is really critical. This is a great thing. Because Google Apps is, you know, cloud computing, it's, it's web-based, it's all in the browser, it doesn't matter where you're at. It doesn't matter if you're at school, if you're at home, if you're on vacation, if you're at the public library, if you can get to a web browser, you can get to all your stuff. Okay. Um, I brought my laptop today, but I really didn't need to. Okay. I could have just sat down at any computer, logged in with my Google Apps account, and everything's there. All my documents, all my Gmail, all my calendar, everything is stored there. Okay. Um, and I, I really do. I mean, I. And I'll talk more about that later, but I have not used nothing against Microsoft Office products at all. But if I'm going to, you know, tell people, hey, we're a Google Apps district, I'm going to lead by example. I have not used Office products for like two and a half years. I do everything, everything in Google Apps, but I have access anywhere I go, even on my phone. I can I have an Android phone, but if an iPhone, that's fine too. But on my Android phone, I can go into my Google Docs and pull up my stuff, my Gmail, my calendar, all of that. Well, this is great because it really opens up a lot of opportunities. Once you're no longer tied to a particular type of computer, like, oh, you have to have a PC or you have to have a Mac or you have to have this version or that version, it really opens up things because it allows us to purchase used computers. It allows us to use older devices. It allows us to tell the kids, you can bring your own device in. We're a BYOD uh, high school, and next year probably our middle school as well. Bring your own device, okay? The students are allowed to bring in their cell phones, their tablets, their laptops, their e-readers, their MP3 players. There's rules, there's all that. I mean, we've got a very, very clear what you're allowed to do and not. But they're allowed to bring their own devices in. Well, they can do that because we're a cloud computing district. Because I don't have to worry. Okay, you've got an iPad. That's fine. You've got a Galaxy Tab. That's fine. You've got a laptop. That's fine. Mac, PC, doesn't matter. If you can get to the internet, you can get to the stuff. So the kids can get to their docs, and they can get to their Gmail, and they can get to their calendar, and they can get to their sites, they can get to everything, no matter what, doesn't matter where you're at, doesn't matter what kind of device you're on. That also opens up opportunities for like maybe blended learning, you know, different types of digital learning opportunities. Maybe school doesn't always have to be exactly the way it is, a brick and mortar building. Maybe for some kids, this doesn't quite work for them, and they need the ability to be able to do some classes at home or they meet face-to-face -face some days and then other days they're online. Well, once you move everything into the web browser, you can do that. You're able to give instruction and collaborate and communicate and work together in the web browser. So access any to anywhere and any time really opens up a lot of new possibilities for you that you wouldn't have had otherwise, which is great. Plus, it also means Oh, no more flash drives and so I, I mean I, I years ago I would have said no more floppy drives but obviously nobody uses those anymore but no more flash drives or CDs or whatever which I mean I, I guarantee I've had enough kids come up in tears I sat on my flash drive and it won't work now and they lost all their stuff well nothing to be lost I mean it's all in the cloud you can just boom pull it right up through Google Docs uh, another important thing why you would go to this would be compatibility as I mentioned, we're not a wealthy school district, so our version of Microsoft Office is pretty old. Now, we still have Office, don't get me wrong. I'll explain what we've done with it. Um, uh, I, I'm not, you know, like I said, I'm not using it because I'm trying to lead by example there, but no, I mean, our staff still have Office, and uh, some of our student uh, labs still have it where they need it. Um, K through 8, the students don't. Okay, they're all on Google Docs, uh, but the staff still have access to, to Office. But our Office is old. The student version is Office 2000, and the staff version is Office 2002. You know, so that's 10 years old. Um, because of that, you'd have kids at home who have a newer computer that has Office 2007, Office 2010, something else, and they would bring things in that weren't compatible, and we're always dealing with that thing, oh, I need to find a computer where I can open this up type of thing. Well, compatibility is no longer an issue with Google Apps because everybody's on the same version everywhere. If you make a Google Doc, it doesn't matter. You can open it up anywhere at any computer, and that's really saved a lot of headaches with compatibility issues. 
Another key reason why Google Apps is that it's modular. Now, you're going to hear me talk about all the crazy things we do with Google Apps. That's because we basically install every piece of it and just have fun with it. But you don't have to. You can say, eh, we're just looking for uh, a way for the kids to create documents online. We just want Google Docs. That's all we want. No problem. Just turn that on. Turn everything else off. Or you could say, you know, nope. We just want an email client for our kids. We want some way for students to have email. No problem. Turn that on. Turn everything else off. Or turn some things on for others and off for others. Like say, we want our high school kids to have email, but not our elementary kids. No problem. Turn it on for the high school. Turn it off for the elementary. It's modular. You can turn on or off whatever pieces you want. Don't feel like if you go Google, you got to go, you got to drink the Kool-Aid and completely go Google and it's entire. No, you don't have to. You can pick and choose the pieces you want. Use them in conjunction with what you have. It's free. What do you have to lose? I I mean, you know, so find the pieces that, that fit what you need and use those. All right. Why else? Frequent updates. Again, I said we've got Office 2000 and 2002. Those don't update. I mean, if I turn on one of our computers that has Office 2002, it will still have Office 2002 on it. I mean, I would have to go out and buy a newer version of Office, and yeah, you get little updates. That's true. You get little patches and fixes and stuff. But once you buy traditional software, you've bought it. You pretty much have it. With Google Apps, it's constantly being updated. Now, this is good and bad. <laughs> the good is you're always getting new features. If I think back over the last couple of years, oh my goodness, they have improved so many things. I mean, they um, didn't used to have um, a way to put in like, you know, footnotes and endnotes in documents. Then they added that. And uh, they didn't used to have animations in their presentation tool like PowerPoint does. Now they have animations. I don't really use animations because you know, I'm just trying to give you information, but you can put them in there if you want. They're in there. Uh, they're always adding new things to it all the time, which is fantastic. They listen to people's needs and they go, oh, hey, that's that sounds like a good idea. And they find a way to roll out new features. Now, the only negative is if you're a trainer, all your help guides are wrong. <laughs> and so it's like every couple of weeks, I'm like, oh, rats, they changed that again. And I got to go in and fix all my help guides. But all the time, at least once a week, there's some new feature in one of the products. And that's really great to have those updates. And you don't have to install the updates. Remember, it's all cloud-based. They make the update, you have the updates. You don't have to worry about running around installing things. Another reason that it's great is it's easy but powerful. What I mean by that is you can get into this pretty easily. None of these programs are intimidating. It's like, oh, well, that's like a word processor. Oh, it's it's like a it's like PowerPoint. Oh, okay, that's you know like a spreadsheet. Oh, I get it. It's it's it's, it's email. It's a calendar. You can get into them very quickly, and so they're easy to use. But that doesn't mean that they're limited. They're actually very powerful. I mean, you can do. And that's why I go back to what I was saying. I've used Google Apps exclusively for the last two and a half years. Very few things, very few things do I ever step out of Google Docs and go to some other program for. And I do a ton of computer stuff. So if it can support all of my computer needs and all the things I do, it is very powerful. You can make really nice documents, really nice presentations, very sophisticated forms, really nice sites. You can do lots of great things. It is a powerful tool. Uh, of course, it is free. I always have to have that in there. That is a, a very good benefit of it. And then the last benefit that I'm going to mention right now, maybe it's the most important or the thing that really separates it, the thing that makes Google Apps so different from traditional Office applications, and that is sharing. Okay, Because it's in the cloud, because all of this is out on Google servers somewhere, you can share your data, share your program, share your documents with anybody you want. Okay, You can give them view only access if you want. So you could create a document, give view access to whoever you want to. They could see that document online as well. Or you could give them edit rights if you wish. They could collaborate with you. They would also be able to open up the document at the same time you have it open. And you could be typing, they could be typing, and you actually see each other typing on there. As you're typing, their words are appearing. And it takes a little getting used to, but it, it works really well. Okay. This opens up all kinds of opportunities. And here's you know, an important thing with technology. 
well, you don't want to just do what you've always done, but just do it electronically. You know, if you roll out Google Apps and, you know, a year later it turns out that all you're doing is exactly the same instruction, exactly the same interaction, exactly the same sort of things, you're just doing it in Google Docs rather than doing it in Office or rather than doing it on paper and pencil, that's unfortunate because we want to we want to stretch. We always want to grow and do new things. And there's a lot of opportunity to transform what you're doing in the classroom by using these tools in ways that you couldn't if you didn't have them, okay? Um, collaboration is one of them. To be able to work together easily with other people really gives you power. It gives you a lot of opportunities that you just can't do otherwise. You don't have those options. So like if you're staff members, you guys can work together. You need to write a grant? Fantastic. Create a Google Doc share it with each member of the grant team and you all can work together on one document no longer hey you write this you write that let's combine them together who's got the most recent version let's update it here guys I'm emailing you back out here's the newest version of it no it's one document that everybody works on same thing for writing a team newsletter or collaborative lesson planning or having a meeting coming up we do this with my tech team I've got about seven members total who are connected to, to my tech team, and we try to have a meeting every two weeks. Well, I'll make an agenda, and I'll send that agenda out, and I'll say, okay, guys, with blank, you know, here's the agenda. Fill it in. What do we need to address? What are the things? I'll put my stuff in there, too, but everybody will put their stuff on there, and they use different colors. We each will choose a different font color so we can tell who's who easily. Well, what ends up happening is half of the things get fixed <laughs> before the meeting starts <laughs> because we're putting them on the agenda going oh oh yeah I remember that oh, let me take care of that real quick and so we end up wiping out half the agenda before we even get to the meeting which is great but this is also great for students to work together group projects that's a fantastic thing to be able to say okay I want you guys to do a presentation and it's no longer you do these two slides all these do these two you do these two and then somehow how do we put these together <laughs> how do we take these PowerPoint slides and put them together no it's one presentation and everybody works on it together and that's fantastic for kids to be able to collaborate together to chat to leave notes for each other to work on group projects and it keeps track of what everybody does. We'll talk more about that later. There's a revision history feature in the Google products that you can go in and see color coded every change every person has made to the documents. So you can see which kids actually typed which things and what percent they did versus others. That's a really nice tool in Google Docs. Um, you can uh, share handouts and forms with students and parents. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. So you can make things just view only so that they can pick them up as like a form or a handout. Uh, you can give electronic surveys and quizzes to your students and the data will get collected. We'll talk about that. Uh, students can turn things in digitally. That's part of our afternoon that I'm planning to talk about is the paperless classroom. How if you use sharing and collaboration, you don't have to have papers anymore. Students can start writing their term paper, share it with you. You can leave comments on the rough draft. They can edit it, make changes. You can keep leaving comments back and forth. And this one piece of paper, well, it's not a paper, this one digital document can exist for the entire course of writing this paper and all the revisions until the final copy. And never once does a piece of paper have to be printed out. So sharing and collaboration is fantastic with Google Apps to be able to connect with others, to work together. And remember, you've, you've got total control. You choose. Is that a private document? Is it view only? Is it edit? Who's allowed to edit it? You have total control over that. All right? So those are a lot of hopefully good reasons on why. Pause there for a moment. Any questions on any of that? Why Google Apps? Okay. Definitely let me know if you have any questions. Bless you. All right. I do want to mention this real quick, though. Now, I don't want to put fears in your head, so maybe you're not thinking these things. But if anybody has any, like, oh, Eric, that sounds good and all, but still, that's a company, it's Google, I don't know, what if, what if, what if, what if. So real quick, let me just reassure you on a couple of things. There's a lot of reliability and security built into Google Apps. First of all, no advertisements. I know I said they're an advertising company, sure, but not in Google Apps for Education, they're not. There are no ads that pop up in Google Docs, nothing's going to show up in their Gmail. There are no advertisements in Google Apps for Education. 
point two, you maintain total ownership of your data. Google clearly, and I've got links to every one of these to back them up. If you want to open up the presentation off the Apps User Group site, click the links. You can read right there where Google says so. They do not own your data. Yes, it's on their servers. You completely, totally own your data. It is not theirs. It is yours. Not only that, they don't share it, reveal it, or sell it to third parties. They are not going to take anything you put in Google Docs, in your Gmail, in your calendar, and in any way ever share that with any sort of vendor, third party, not at all. It stays entirely inside of Google Apps where you've put it. Even more than that, Google employees are not allowed to even look at your data without your permission. It's on their own server. They cannot read your email. They cannot open your documents. If there's a problem, you actually have to give them permission to assist you in opening those things up. It is your data, your documents. Nobody's sitting there on a Friday night reading your Gmail. Okay, that now, uh, your tech person might be. No, I won't say. Uh, but uh, no, they wouldn't do that. Not on Friday nights. Is it? Is, is it usually a slow, slow Saturday? Oh, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, but no, Google is not doing that in any way at all. All right. Now the next one I don't totally understand, but it sounds important. Um, Google Apps has uh, passed what's called an SAS 70 Type 2 audit. I don't really know what that is, but it sounds good. I've, I've clicked the link. I've read it. I still don't totally understand it. What it means is this. They have allowed an external company to basically audit them and look at them and keep them accountable, and they have passed the highest level of the security audit that other companies have to go through. So they are audited by other companies. Uh, they promise 99.9% .9 uptime. That's important <laughs> because if all your stuff's up in the cloud, you got to be able to get to it. <laughs> so, and that is true. Very, very, very rarely do their services go down. Now, when they do go down, it's usually in the middle of a training, from what I found out. <laughs> usually, I'm presenting somewhere, and that's the one hour <laughs> in the six months that it goes down. So that does happen. Yes, there are outages. It does happen, but it is incredibly rare. It has never, we've used it for two years. It has not posed a problem for our district. Okay, They are up, like I said, 99.9% .9 of the time, their services are up and running. And your data is backed up multiple times. Okay, So they back up your data like three different times in all these different ways as well. So just want to ease any fears you might have about reliability and security. At the same time, though, I want to be honest here. There are challenges. This isn't all just absolutely beautiful and wonderful and so forth. There definitely are challenges here. So a couple things to talk about. You do need a reliable internet connection. It's on the web. If you don't, if your internet's not working, you can't get to your stuff. Okay, so you do have to make sure that you've got a reliable connection. Um, in our district, we were fortunate before financially things got too bad to be able to put in uh, fiber connections. And so we do have fiber between our buildings and we have fiber down from our high school to the county office that connects us out to the rest of the world. So we do have good bandwidth. We do have good connectivity. And that's important. Now we, we're wireless as well. And, you know, so we had to make sure we have enough access points and all those sort of things like that. So that, that is, that's important. If, if connectivity is an issue, this is going to be, there, there's a challenge there. You, you've got to figure out how you're going to address that, but there's a challenge there. Now, Google's trying to help. They're offering more and more offline capabilities, okay? Um, this summer, I know they're adding even some more features to Google Docs where you'll be able to basically launch Google Docs even if you don't have a connection. Do your work, and as soon as the connection comes back, it'll all sync up, okay? They've done that to a degree, but they're adding even more features. Where you see this happen a lot of times is people talk about doing this like on a plane flight or something, you know, they start working on a document, then they get on their plane because they got to go fly as a business person, whatever, well, they got to, you know, turn off their internet connection or whatever for a while. Soon, you know, they can keep working. They can keep typing their document. They can keep working. And as soon as the internet connection comes back up, everything syncs up. And Google is doing more and more and more to make that available. So you can get your Gmail offline, your calendar offline, your documents offline, all of that. Work on them and then sync them back up once the connection returns. Another thing that's an important challenge to be aware of is because this is all online, your web browser is really important. <laughs> 
you've got to use a modern web browser. Now, I'm not going to you know, bash Microsoft. It's nothing like that. We use Windows on all our computers. But their web browser, IE, is not always the best solution when it comes to Google Docs, okay? Now, we use Windows XP on our computers, so we can't upgrade to the latest IE browser. I think IE 9 is only for, like, you know, Windows 7. We have to use IE 8. That's the latest we can go. We have found that IE 7 and IE 8 are so slow when it comes to Google Docs, okay? Don't set yourself up for failure. Don't set your students up for failure. Don't judge Google Docs by a browser that doesn't render it well, okay? IE is a great browser for showing web pages. It's not a great browser for running applications, okay? If I take IE 8 and I go to open up a Google Doc, I'm not exaggerating. It, it can take 30 seconds of nothing, just waiting and waiting, just to open the document. Well, that's ridiculous. Nobody wants to do that. And then scrolling can take forever. And then you click here and it highlights the wrong thing. That's because IE7 and IE8 are not designed to support what's going on inside of Google Apps. It's much more sophisticated. So we suggest Google Chrome as the web browser. Firefox is certainly an excellent web browser as well. I won't say anything negative about that. But we have found Chrome to be the absolute fastest and the best integrating. Google makes Chrome. They make apps. They work together great. But Firefox is a great one as well. But the point is, you need to use one of those modern standards compliant browsers like Chrome or Firefox to be able to get out of it what you should. When I open up a Google Doc, it just opens. There's no delay. When I scroll, it just scrolls. But I use Chrome. So please be aware of that. I don't want anybody to judge it and say, Man, I tell you, I do not want to use this Google Docs. It is so slow. Check the browser before anything else. Chances are they're using the wrong browser. Um, I do want to mention as a challenge also that Google Apps does lack some features. I said that it's a great, great, powerful program, all that. Yeah, but guys, Office, Microsoft Office, yeah, that is the premier Office suite. There's things that Microsoft Office does that Google Apps doesn't. And vice versa. There's things Docs does that Microsoft Office doesn't. But for a quick example, just be aware of this. Columns. Yeah, there actually isn't a columns button in Google Docs. If you just want to do like a newsletter with two columns, there actually isn't a columns button. It doesn't do columns yet. Uh, now, that may be a deal breaker for some people. Typically, it's not. You can use tables instead. You can make a table with two columns and type your stuff in the table cells and you can make the table invisible if you want. So you can mimic columns, but no, it does not have a columns button. Now, I bet it will. Give them another six months. Because if I went back six months, there were other features that it didn't have that it does now. They're always adding new features all the time. But at this moment, as of this session, they don't have columns in there. Uh, mail merge. Yeah, there's a way to do it, but not an easy way yet. There are options, but to do a very simple, easy mail merge like, like Microsoft Office does, no, there's not an easy way to do that. Okay. Uh, desktop publishing option. If you use Office and you use Publisher, there's not really a Google equivalent to Publisher. If you want to do like greeting cards and stuff, yeah, you can use Google Docs. You can do this and that. It's not quite the same as the desktop publishing you get with Publisher. So be aware of that. Now, what does that mean? Again, for our district, what that means is we have not taken Office away from our staff. See, I think that would be the wrong choice. That's just my opinion. This is me saying my opinion. If we were to take Office away and say, here's Google Docs, I think what people are going to notice is what they're missing. They'll say, I can't do this or I can't do that. But because we left Office for the staff and then gave them Google Docs in addition to it, the focus is, ah, look at what else I can do. Oh, my goodness, I can share this and we can go paperless and this this forms thing is awesome and oh my goodness this so they look at all the great things about it rather than looking at what they're missing and so I think that's important I don't want to make people mad and have them get a bad idea about this so we have not taken office away from our staff I don't think we'll take it away from our secretaries anytime soon because they really need like mail merge and things like that and if it's not there if the feature is not there well it's just not there they have to use office for that but not so for our students like I told you K through 8 
We talked to the teachers. We looked at what do you guys do with Microsoft Office? Tell me about the projects you run and the stuff you do. And we went through it and we said, you know what? There's really nothing the students do, K-8, that has to be done in Office. It can all be done in Google Docs. And so we pulled off Office, pulled it off all the student computers, K through 8. And so they just use Docs. Our high school students still have access to Office because we teach some business classes in our vocational program at the high school, and they have to have Office for that. So we definitely do leave it there for them as well. But be, just be aware of that, that there are some differences. There are some things, some features it does lack. And, of course, change can always be a challenge. I think that just has to be listed as something. Anytime you make a change from what you're used to to something different, that is a challenge that you have to address.